What's up everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob. Gonna be doing the Brook Laddie Black Art 1990. Okay. This one is 23 years old. Alright. Um, it is unchill filtered and it's coloring free. Okay. So zero colorant in this whatsoever. Um, it is not disclosed what casks the black art is aged in and that was purposely done by the whiskey maker okay there will be one more addition this is the 4.1 there will be one more addition and then it's then people are saying that's it um, so the 5.1 will be coming out probably in the next few months some people have had a chance to review it already um, it's supposedly incredible it will be 24 years old as opposed to 23 years old, or at least the, the minimum age in, on the bottle will be 24 years old. So the youngest whiskey in that bottle will be 24 years old. It could be up to 30 years old, I'm not exactly sure. Um, not a lot is disclosed other than the fact of its age, or the youngest age anyway. Um, and like I said, the fact that it's unchill filtered and no uh, colorant added whatsoever. Uh, I got a sample of the Brook Laddie Black Art from a guy named Jason in um, Brooklyn, Ontario. Sorry, I, lo I was lost there for a second. Uh, Brooklyn, Ontario, he sent me a nice, I would say probably about 100 milliliters and I was able to taste it over time and it is very, very, very good stuff. All right, it is 49.2% alcohol. Comes in this interesting tin with um, this plastic contraption inside that slides up and down so that I guess the bottle doesn't smash to the bottom. Um, this is pretty interesting. I wanted to share something with you guys really quickly before I get into the review. I was sent, or I, pur I recently purchased um, from a guy that runs, a guy named Larry that runs uh, a Cavalan fan page on Facebook. He's a Canadian guy, he lives in Taiwan, uh, Taipei specifically. He sent me these two samples, one of the Vino Barrique, which is the big bottle that I have here. Right, highly sought after Vino Barrique Solist. Okay, um, just mind the scroll here. Okay, he sent me this beautiful Cavalon glass. All right, I can't wait to use this. I'm really excited about using this. I've been looking for glasses like this in the GTA and haven't been able to find them. Um, and then he sent me a sample of a 54% cask strength Cavalan Sherry um, and a sample of 57% uh, Vino Barrique. All right, so I will be doing reviews on the two minis for sure. I haven't decided whether or not I'll be opening my, my Cavalan uh, collection that I've just started, but Maybe in, the, maybe in the near future, I'm not 100% sure. But for now I have the two minis. Uh, the sherry doesn't quite represent this sherry, but uh, we'll see, I haven't decided. Anyway, to the black art. Okay, a lot of people swear by this. It's unpeated, uh, but if you nose it, <clears throat> you smell a bit of um, like a cask smoke. So that's when the char barrel and you get that like bourbon-esque type smoke, not peat smoke, okay? Very specifically, I wanna stress this, not peat smoke. You do not get peat smoke on the nose. It is super sweet on the nose. You can tell there's a variety of wine casks being used for this one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some French wine, 
uh, Saunters or Sauters, Saunters. I'm not exactly sure how that's pronounced. There's definitely some sherry as well in this. You can tell by the color. Perhaps it's port as well. I'm not a, not a hundred percent sure. Although I don't get that that sweet Easter type bread note that I normally get off of a um, a port cask. As I said, they didn't he the master blender distiller, uh, the master whiskey maker at Brook Laddie did not disclose and will not disclose what casks were used for his Black Art series, all right? Uh, there's, been, there's been four so far, like I said, the fifth one is coming out shortly, and that'll be it. Um, and a lot of people don't like that, but I think it's kind of cool. It's, as long as you know you're getting an uncho filtered, uh, color-free, or color and free, product then why not you know what have a little bit of fun with it it's interesting okay we know that he's done everything legally because otherwise he wouldn't be able to pass standard in Scotland and he's done that so that's all we should really be concerned about very fruity dark fruits dried figs Dried plums, raisins, maybe a touch of salt. This is an Isla Scotch. Very rare smell for an Isla whiskey. You don't smell an Isla whiskey that smells like a coastal highland, or um, I would say probably the best comparison I can give to this one is like a an old Pulteney. So many different kinds of fruits. You get some really ripe orange, and even some um, milk chocolate in there as well. On the palate, It's sweet, <clears throat> it's got a touch of saltiness, not much at all. Nice finish, good mouth feel. Finish goes on. This is 49, this is almost 50%, 49.2%, but it does not drink like a 49.2% whiskey. Okay, it does not drink like a 23 year old whiskey in the sense that it's got fresh fruit. It doesn't have that over oaked taste that some 20 plus whiskeys do. This is really, really good stuff. Okay, getting a little bit more of that um, salinity now. Like ocean spray. Zero peat. I'm not picking up any peatiness whatsoever. Syrupy. Maple syrup. Some chocolate notes. Some custardy, like fudgy notes. We're not quite approaching coffee here. Like, there's not a lot of oak, which is surprising to me. Like a, not a strong oaky taste, it's just super smooth, which a lot of whiskey uh, drinkers hate that word, but it, it really is. And it's not hot at all, okay? At 49.2%, you are not getting that burnt tongue feeling, numb tongue, none of it. This is almost approaching too sweet, but it's not too sweet. It's the, like 
the perfect amount of sweetness. This is just really, really good stuff in my opinion. This is an A plus for me, guys. Um, I feel like I've been giving out, well, I've given out three in a matter of two months, um, which is very uncommon if you've watched my channel from the start. That's my third A plus, um, and it's all in one year. And I have a funny feeling that this year is gonna be filled with A pluses with these Cavalans. I'm not sure, I can't say just yet because I haven't tried them yet. Um, but I have a feeling there's gonna be quite a few. I actually really wanna redo my review of the Glen Going 25 year old. I've left some in the bottle. It's been oxidizing or uh, it's, yeah, it's been oxidizing for a while and it's so much better now than it was when I first opened the bottle that I really feel like to give it proper justice, I should do a second review on it, which may be coming up in the near future. Um, I've changed my review this Friday to the McAllen Double Oak. I've had an opportunity to try this. It's really good stuff. I wanna get this review out before it is released um, to the general public in Ontario within the next month or so. So I'll be doing that. Then I'll move on. Um, I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna continue with this two reviews a week. Uh, perhaps I'm gonna be doing a collection video and a review or like an informative video and a review each week. I do have a ton of whiskey to review, but there's no rush. It's a long year, so I'll get to everything eventually. Um, what you guys can do is if you see anything on my desk and you really, really want to see it, uh, leave a comment below and we'll go from there. Maybe I'll bump it up um, on the list to review a little quicker. The other thing I want to say is I recently met in person, uh, we went for a couple of drinks, uh, Spencer Gooderham, he's the ambassador of Corby's for um, basically the central and east side of, or west side, I can't remember exactly, uh, Spencer don't kill me. Um, but I know he's definitely the ambassador of Corby's for Ontario and many parts of Canada. He gave me this uh, JP Weiser's double distill rye, or double still rye, sorry. Um, he gave me another bottle as well and he will be joining the channel in the near future. We haven't decided on a date just yet, but we're thinking towards the end of March. Um, so that'll be really cool. He has a really cool story to tell about his heritage and that last name, that's no coincidence, okay? So um, stay tuned for that. That'll be really cool. I think you guys will enjoy that. And I believe that's about it. Like I said, if you see something you like and you wanna know about it, you want me to review it a little sooner, let me know. I do have to get to a bunch of these minis that I have eventually, and I do plan on getting to this Weller shortly, all right? But I guess um, all in due time. We'll get to it very quickly. It'll come faster than you know. This is an A+, I highly recommend it. You probably need to go out and grab a bottle as soon as possible because uh, they are disappearing rapidly. There's a few left in Ontario, and they're priced at about $350. If you have $350 to spend, and you're a collector, this is definitely a bottle you might be interested in because they are gonna be gone. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. They're a nice little series piece, okay? So some people will be collecting the whole series. I didn't have the opportunity to collect 1.1, 2.1, and 3.1 unfortunately, but I do plan on buying 5.1 because of how good 4.1 was. So A plus, really good stuff. Thanks for joining me guys. Uh, if you like this video, sus subscribe below. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You guys can uh, find me at, at Whiskey in the Six pretty much uh, for any of them. If you type it in, I'll show up. Um, and that's it. Cheers guys.